You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, get the point. Good. And now... Bend Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? It is a Freaker Friday evening. And <laughs> we are hunting um, horny back toads. <laughs> or not. Or not. I don't know that they have any out in this neck of the woods, out here in the middle of the boonies. It's a bit breezy out here in the middle of the boonies today, I tell you. I tell you, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. and I'm sorry, Beetle, for if that brought you sadness. I did not mean to bring you sadness, hun. Um, but yeah, and Quantum Cucumber, I uh, don't remember. I thought maybe Bernie was not because I'd seen pictures of Bernie with his spouse, his wife, and their little ones. I thought it was just Elton that was that way. In any case, yeah, it's a freaking Grammy rocket chair, and I'm, <laughs> it's Friday, and why should that be any different from any other day with me going off on a squirrel tangent, or a horny back toad tangent, you never know with me. In any case, ooh, let's talk about sex, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> Do you know there is no such thing, damn it, oh, no, wait, that's gender, yeah. Yeah, there are no such thing as boys and girls. Really? <laughs> okay, honey, if you're happy to think about that, it, uh, back to you. Um, oh, you have horny back toads there, huh? Okay, sounds fun. Ooh, a bowl of cereal does sound good, Beetle. Okay, so I got to say hey to everybody out here in the cybernetic world. Uh, but first, I got to say, I got some notifications over here on Twitter. Apparently, I'm not totally shadow banned. Uh, I have someone that started following me today that wants me to help him get to a million followers. And it's like, no. <laughs> you know, when you start telling me that, hey, you know, um, I would really appreciate if you followed me back so I can get to. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You know, apparently you didn't get that memo. You know, the one that says that I don't belong to groups that want me as a member. <laughs> it's just pretty much that simple. It's kind of scary. But in any case, hmm. Hmm. Oh, Grammy. Pippi. Hi, Pippi. Ah, I love it when Pippi comes to visit, too. My little rascal is sitting here like the Queen of Sheba, and she's waiting for her opportunity to sneak up and pounce on my lap. Silly little key cat. In any case, over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison right now. And oh, my God, people doing backflips off of cars. Don't be doing that stuff because he ain't going to catch you, honey. Um, over here on realliberty.org. What's going on over here? Hey, Grimner is letting people know that I am live on realliberty.org as well. Thank you, Grim. I really do appreciate it. Um, and it looks like Grim's the only one that is online over here right now everybody else has dropped out what the heck i'm here dang it uh over here on this effing site freedoms network let's see who's oh it's still waking up i forgot to wake that one up oops my bad i see estrella is here um how does the rich get wealthier uh, <laughs> oh there are so many paths to that my dear a lot of them are very crooked. Um, yeah, I see Estrella's over here as well as Grimmy and yours truly. And Bob Renner was here a little bit ago as well. So was Pushing a Pencil. And thank you, Grim, for letting everybody over here know that I am live and in person on this Freaker Friday evening. And by the way, Vinny, honey, I had to go in and clean up my uncle's or I would have listened to you today. Because I was actually home until I went, oh shit, I got to go clean up my uncle's. So... I missed you, but I'll catch the podcast from that ponder gander that was on earlier today. How about over here on Mines? What's going on on Mines? Oh, yeah, Joe Biden sniffing, uh, yeah, that. 
this one smells funny. That was funny, Grim, when you shared that as like, oh my God, that's just too freaking hilarious. What is it? Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin Jenner. Yeah. That, that one does smell funny, Joe, but I don't know why that would bother you any. You're freaking creeper deluxe. Pervy, pervy bugger. Oh, well. Hi, everybody over here on Minds. Hope you're doing absolutely splendiferous this evening. And, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I was out <coughs> in dirt and dust today, too. So, yay. And they're playing tic-tac-toe in the sky. God bless their hearts. Somebody needs to do something. Oh, what is this? Oh, a Mark Passio meme. Anarchy doesn't mean out of control. It means out of their control. That's a quote by Jim Dodge. Yeah. Anarchy means you control yourself. That's what that means. Yes. Oh, you going to turn it up really loud? Sweet. A birthday bonfire? How fun is that? That sounds like way too much fun. Fire. Bonfires are fun. It's all fun and games till someone burns their wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a wiener roast. Excuse me. Different thing. And <coughs> see, I'm still all choked up. Uh, over here on In the Matrix. Let me see who's over here. I didn't share it over here. These people are very into Q, and that's awesome. You know, I'm happy that they're very into Q. I try to share other things to kind of get them to, you know, broaden your horizon because the Matrix is multi pronged. And you need to be connecting dots here, peeps, so that you don't get. Uh, trampled on, basically. Angry white Kansas congressman blasts divisive angry white male course. What? Oh, I'm going to have to check that crap out. I think I had something else planned for tonight, but oh, and it's on Zero Hedge. Well, sweet. Let's just see what's going on. In any case, after, after I'm done saying, hey there, hi there, ho there, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Dust. Ah. Okay, now over here to the place where you need to be if you're going to listen to me and give me some static. Uh, sir, yeah, quantum cucumber, whatever that is. Okay. Um, oh, oh, okay. Thanks, Grant or Vinny. Okay. Team view, team view. And Moosey's got a new computer. Booyah! Yay, Moosey! Okay, over here in the RLM, which is the place where you need to be if you want to give me some static, okay? Because, you know, I tin can, kite string, and duct tape, so I'm bound to have static somewhere along the way. But right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by that gentleman that is always hearing pleasant voices, Cowboy Tech. Looky there, we got Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know? Closely followed by the lovely Moose Quail. They will be on later this evening with the Freaker's Ball, and a good time will be had by all, except for me. I will be going to bed early because I have to work early. So, angry white male, hmm. Um, I don't know if there is a color bar or not, but I know in the winter time. I closely resemble paper. <laughs> copy paper. Regular old copy paper. Let's just put that out there. I don't quite fluoresce. From what I understand, Flasher told me that I don't really fluoresce like, like Circles does. But, you know, I'll let Circle have the fluorescing and I'll just look like copy paper. It's all good. It works. It works. Okay, back to saying, hey, lovely Kate is here. Hey, Miss Kate, how you doing? I know you're not static, quantum cucumber. You're a quantum cucumber. That's like super de duper de supercharged cucumber. Oh, and I went to see Lisa B. last night, and she fixed me a cucumber martini, and it was actually quite tasty. I haven't had an an adult beverage in so long I said oh sweetheart I'm gonna have to hang out here for a while so <laughs> a cubit a cubit of possibility sweet that's pretty awesome okay uh, I'm chatting while I'm trying to say hey I also see um, D 
DC is here as well as Asmo. Hi, Asmodius Asmo. How you doing, hon? Chalsa Denis is also in the chat as well as yours truly. I be Don C is here. Hey, Don. How's thanks? How's Pappy's doing? I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. I hope your knee is getting better, sweetie. You really should be, it should be doing better by now, honey. That's what I'm thinking. It should be better by now. Um, or at least not as painful. I also see Meister Brower is here out there in the desert. It's not quite desert here. We do have some trees instead of cactus, but I have a really big aloe vera plant out in front of the house. Does that count? Hmm. Okay. Um, moving along. Ponder Gander. That's Vinny's alter ego. It's the one that actually gets all philosophizing and stuff. <laughs> That's his story, and he's going to stick to it. I also see the lovely Rain is here, as well as Rob Woikes. Hey, Rob, did you do the bubbler yet, or are you just logged in and not really here? <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't say squeeze me, squeeze me. If you squeeze me, then I might have other emissions. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along. The lovely Rain. Oh, I did say Rain. Ooh, ooh, I get to do sound effects. Trust no one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like doing that, Trust. Thank you ever so much for having that lovely Nick. I also see Vanna White is here, as well as Vinny. Vinny, how you doing, hon? And looky there, we got a weather dork in the in the channel chat. I, I've tuned into weather dork. Just don't mess with me, okay? The lovely Z, Beth Z is also here as well as Phantom, who did my intro for me. Bless your heart, Phantom. Beetle is here with Pippi. Beetle and Pippi. That's as it should be. Cycles is here. Hi, Cycles. How you doing, lady? I hope everything is wonderful over there in Denmark. Got a Colfax 101 is also logged in as well as Cyborg Noodle. And seeing as how it is Friday and Apostophorian Holy Day, may you be touched by his noodly goodness. I also see Dakota is here as well as Frumpy 3. Holy smokes, Frumpy 3. Is it a multiplicity thing going on here, hon? Do I need to be concerned? <coughs> you did see that movie, didn't you? <laughs> the more you uh, clone yourself, the dumber they get. Just saying. Although they can be quite insightful, but they're still just not exactly the sharpest crayon in the box, don't you know? I also see Gromit is here, as well as JJ's 99. Kozu is also logged in, and Carl Marx is over in the gulag. <laughs> Carl, what did you do, honey? Shame on you. We got some keep it simple stupid in the chat. Hi, Kiss. How are you doing? And I don't know if that's what that means or not, but that's every time I see that word now, it's either Hershey's Kiss or keep it simple stupid. It's, that's just where I go. Um, hi, Beetle. <laughs> Uh, Pompa Pompa Pon Sauce is also here as well as the Quantum Cucumber. You know, it almost... Okay. I almost said, okay, I'll just say it. That almost vibrates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I, <coughs> excuse me. I have some crazy people out here. Well, there's a lot of crazy people out here in the boonies because you don't necessarily have to be crazy to live here, but it sure helps. But um, when there's times when I have cucumbers that get away from me. You know, I call them lurkers, and they're... They get the size of a healthy looking zucchini and they still taste good. My mother absolutely loves them because she'll just wander around the yard and just chowing down. But um, I was showing them to some friends that actually they're friends of my youngest daughter. And uh, one of them goes, damn, Grammy, you know what you could use that for? And then she started telling me and I'm like, oh, my God, I do not need to know about your special sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frumpy's being a window licker. <laughs> window lickers of the world unite. And uh, just don't try and both of you lick the same window, okay? Because then you start mixing Germans and it's not necessarily cool. Uh, in any case, <laughs> hi, Sock Puppet. Sock Puppet. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the 
Silamon. Silamon. I love that. That sounds so exotic. <laughs> and let's see. Who's over in the red pill that ain't over in the RLM chat? Uh, F. Canella is over here as well as uh, Juana Taco and Katie Troxel and Q Cupcake and Soily. We got a Soily booger. Of course, it's surly and then a bunch of underscores. So it's kind of a fill in the blank. You soily bugger. <laughs> Too fun. Too fun. Okay, so where do I want to go? I think I will go to the Kansas link first. Just because. Just because. It's an angry white Kansas congressman who blasts divisive angry white mail course at KU. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, growing up in Kansas, we always called it Gay U, and uh, K State was Ag Central. So you know, because well, that's just the way we we called them when I was younger, and I still do, obviously, to this day. But um, this is the class, which is officially titled "Angry White Male Studies." Wow, let's be just as goes racist, shall we? It's being offered during the fall of the 2019 semester. <coughs> Excuse me. So was that already offered or is that in the coming up semester? Is that going to be, well, that's it's dated today, so it must be next fall. Hmm. And it's scheduled to be taught by Christopher Forth, who's the Dean's Professor of Humanities and Professor of History. Ah, so you're the professor of his story and monsterisms. Because last I checked, human, didn't human mean a monster? Maybe I'm thinking wrong. I could be. You never know. Sometimes them cobwebs get crossed. In any case, according to the course description, the class will explore the deeper sources of this emotional state while evaluating recent manifestations of male anger in Europe and the U.S. since the 1950s. Hmm. The University of Kansas did not return a request for comment from campus reform, but one, of can or one can Kansas congressman offered his take on Twitter. Instead of a course to unite people and empower women, KU has decided to offer a class that divides the student population and could pose a Title IX violation by creating a hostile campus environment based on gender. That's from Representative Ron Estes, a Republican from Kansas. A Republican, Ron Estes. I'm, hmm, <coughs> excuse me. I'm trying to... I don't think he's from my neck of the woods, but he almost looks like he could be from rural. Oh, well. According to Title IX, no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any educational program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. The University of Kansas Title IX office did not respond in time for publication when asked for the congr or about the congressman's tweet. Obviously, they did not wish to respond in time for publication just because they didn't want it to be on cybernetic paper. Did you know that in 2017, the University of Kansas received, wait for it, $148,178,000 in federal research funding. That's according to the Kansas Reform Report. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a sister that actually drives a activity, not an activity bus, a bus for KU. And basically taking people all over the campus and yeah. It's a big ass bus. It's a big ass bus. <coughs> and I think, dang it, girlfriend. I'm proud of you for being able to handle that big thing, but oh my God. I, mm, wow. What's up? Gag Central, Chris. Uh, oh, story of male anger. Hmm. <coughs> 
Excuse me. I would think my lozenge would have started working by now. Damn it. In any case, huh? Huh? Okay. Uh, I didn't want to go there. What the heck? How did I do that? <laughs> That's how I did that. I See, I push buttons in the middle of a show and I, all kinds of wonky things start happening. It's kind of scary, actually. Hmm. So angry white males, it, that, you know, that sort of implies that no one else gets angry. Although, I would be somewhat inclined to say uh, some of this is justified simply for the fact that, uh, what was that I saw about a year ago, I saw that the most discriminated against individual when it comes to job market kind of stuff, when you're looking at race and gender and age and all that other fun stuff, is the early 20 white male. Hmm, you, it kind of makes you wonder, why would they have anger issues? Although I'm sure they're speaking about older white men, but you know, yeah. Anger issues, huh? Can't imagine. Can't imagine. Okay, so I'm going to get this posted over here. Oh, a cannabis lozenge? Actually, sweetie, I've got one of my doTERRA breathe lozenges, and it's got eucalyptus and lemon and, and uh, clove, and I can't remember what else is in it. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, but I have that from being out in the chemtrails and the dust and the wind kind of tickle tonight. And it's like, damn it, cut this out. So, <sighs> I will eventually make it go probably right about time for me to, ooh, a cannabis lozenge. That would be, that would be amazing. Amazing, I tell you. You know, and speaking of cannabis. I just happen to have something queued up about that for this evening even. It's from realpharmacy.com. <coughs> Cannabis cleans up nuclear waste and toxic chemical waste. Hey, maybe that's what I got going on. <coughs> oh, well. Ooh, and someone does really, really beautiful artwork with uh, avocados and watermelon. Huh. Excuse me. Damn it. <coughs> In any case. <coughs> Stop it. Stop it. Back to this article. So, this farmer is growing hemp to save his soil from tox toxic chemical waste. Europe's largest steel mill is in the city of Toron Toronto, Italy. I'm sure I said that wrong. And uh, it's used to produce over 10 million tons of steel every year. 40% of all of the steel made in Italy, and it currently employs about 12,000 people. Now, the local economy of Taranto, um, I know I messed it up, uh, which is a population of 200,000, is almost entirely reliant on the steel mill, which is one of the biggest and most deadly polluters of anywhere in the Mediterranean. Now the plant is notorious or is a notorious source of dioxin and dust from the plant is believed to be the reason why um, Toronto has a lung cancer rate of 30 percent higher than national average. Now the plant is so toxic that farmers are forbidden from raising livestock within 20 kilometer radius of the plant. That was in 2008. And the government ordered the slaughter of thousands of sheep and other animals that were found to have been excessively high levels of dioxin. Yeah. <clears throat> so we had a dioxin dolly lamb. <laughs> dolly lama. Oh, I'm so unfunny sometimes. <laughs> and yet I'm tickled. So the area also could be making a lot of money off tourists because of its nice beaches and pastoral farmland, but the mill keeps um, potential visitors away as well. Now the mill is currently under government control and health officials <coughs> excuse me, ordered the mill to partially shut down, yet the move was blocked by government authorities. 
and the police partially occupied the plant as part of the criminal investigation, and its owners were ultimately arrested and jailed for committing environmental disaster, which is a serious crime in Italy. Should be a serious crime anywhere. That's if there is an actual environmental disaster. Oh, you know, like what the EPA did to uh, the river out in Colorado. Oh, but that's okay because the government did that one. In any case, the mill still continues to operate and produces much less steel than it once had. Now, Vincenzo Fornaro and his farm is less than a mile away from the steel mill. Over a decade, his entire flock of 600 sheep had to be killed. Since then, he's been forbidden from raising livestock or crops for food. So instead, Vincenzo has decided to grow weed. He doesn't grow pot to smoke or sell. Instead, he grows it to pull toxins from the steel mill out of his soil. Now, he has planted huge stands of industrial hemp on his farm, which is not the same thing as weed. Same family, different, kind of like a cousin, if you will. So, he is using a tactic called uh, phyto, phyto remediation. There you go. And this tactic uses plants to remove heavy metals, radioactive material, and other bad stuff from the earth. Now, industrial hemp has been used to clean up deadly pollutants before. The most famous use of industrial hemp for phyto, or, yeah, phyto remediation was near the site of the deadly nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl in the Ukraine. In the mid-1990s, a company named Phytotech worked with researchers and the Ukraine-based seed bank to plant thousands of hemp plants in and around Chernobyl. Phytoremediation is relatively a new process, but it is very helpful. Considering that there are tens of thousands of polluted sites across the United States in desperate need of safe cleanup, this process could be the answer to a lot of our issues. Nothing can be built on polluted sites until they are cleaned, meaning that these sites sit and continue to pollute the earth until something is done. Billions are spent each year in efforts to clean up toxic soil, <coughs> and the time for phytoremediation is now. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, if milk, if you have a milk truck spill, that is considered a hazardous waste, according to the EPA, and you have to come in and remove the top two feet of topsoil in order to clean it up because it's bad it's milk and well okay it was unpasteurized milk <coughs> excuse me it's crazy i tell you some of the rules they have are just absolutely insane so back to this according to researchers from colorado state university <clears throat> hemp is extremely effective in removing toxic element cadmium from soils and this is convenient because cadmium contamination is everywhere <clears throat> excuse me it is seen in fossil fuels old school pesticides and many other byproducts of human civilization yeah we're very uncivilized for a being a civilization if you ask me now hemp since hemp grows quickly has deep roots for this process um, has deep roots and doesn't appear to be stunted by pollution hemp is one of the best plants to use for phyto re uh, remediation another amazing thing about using hemp for this process is that once it has ha has removed the toxic chemicals from the soil it can still be put to use Hemp can be converted into oil for lubricants or other industrial purposes, and it can be used as insulation, and it can be even be used as paper or construction material. The most heavy metals appear to accumulate in the leaves of hemp, so it's best to use the stalks or the seeds. Sweet! So while it might not be a good idea to eat or wear hemp products culled from these areas where nuclear waste once glowed, this hemp is still safe to use in other applications. In Italy, where hemp is being grown to detox the land or the uh, toxic chemicals released by the mill, activists are actually beginning to use the hemp to replace steel. 
activists have built a brand new apartment building completely made out of hemp fiber, which I myself am actually doing an awful lot of research into hempcrete, which is a concrete made out of um, hemp fiber. And there's actually a company in my neighboring state that produces this product. And I'm thinking, hey there, have I got a deal for you. So I found this extremely fascinating. <coughs> cool, cool, cool. Oh, hey, all kinds of way cool. There's all kinds of way cool articles on the side here, too. Little known fruit from the Philippines found to be a powerful anti-cancer food. That was from March 19th. Another one from March 19th is proof that turmeric is just as effective as 14 pharmaceutical drugs. Um, another one from March the 19th. More effective than morphine and probably growing in your backyard. This wild plant is nature's strongest painkiller. And I think that's milkweed or milk thistle, I think is what that is. And yes, I do have some growing in my yard. So, not only don't just read, you know, or check what I read, because God knows my reading can be pretty dang goofy. But uh, don't just check out this article. Also... Check out the links on the side because there's really some pretty awesome stuff off on the side as well. Okay, what's that quantum cucumber? Our knowledge of the natural microbiome of field-grown cannabis in terms of ry rhizosphere bacteria and endoph endophytic fungi is limited to just a few focused studies. Hmm... Yeah, because they don't want you studying that too closely there, quantum cucumber, because if you really figure out just exactly how good it is for you, then, um, yeah, big pharma's just going to have to go by the wayside. Um, Hootie Doody, what, what are you guys talking about here? It's... Dun, dun, dun. So the takeaway is to keep the buds away from the soil and don't let it get wet. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, the other one I wanted to get to real quick. Go to my pocket. Dun, 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 dun. Is another one about something that you may not have known about. Now, my brother did send me a how to make dandelion salve, which I'm, I'll just go ahead and post that in the in the chat real quick because I think Moosey was interested in this at one time or another and I am going to do this because ha, I happen to have dandelions growing in my yard and no I do not spray with weed killer so um, go ahead and share that one but the one that I wanted to get to and mainly is because I'm just so excited because I have had, I actually had some of this over winter and survive. So I'm just thrilled, 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 thrilled. Um, it's in a container, but hey, it's from getholistichealth.com. And did you know that ginger is up to 10,000 times more effective than chemotherapy at treating cancer? Yes, I have one of my containers that I grew ginger in. I had several of them that were in really big tubs that that I, w I just don't have space inside to have been able to bring them in and let them overwinter. But the smaller planter that I have, that's probably about, a, it's about a five-gallon planter. Um, my rhizomes are doing really good, so they it survived and overwintered, and it's getting ready to start putting up leaf shoots so I'm just excited as I'll get out my ginger I'm I am a recurring ginger grower yay I'm so excited I love ginger I love making ginger water ginger water is really really easy to do too and it's even better if you add just a little bit of cinnamon and then slice an apple up in there with it while because what you do is you steep you slice up your ginger and then you steep it in water don't quite let it get to a boil just kind of let it simmer real good 
and you put the apple in there and the cinnamon in there together and after it's kind of done the simmer thing for about half hour 45 minutes then you let it cool off to room temperature and then pour it into um, I usually make like a half gallon batch at a time um, but pour it into a half gallon jug and then um, just fill it up the rest of the way with just regular water and you know if you like it a little bit more sweetened although with uh, my farmer says it tastes like liquid apple pie <laughs> but if you want it a little bit sweeter just add a little bit of local honey to it it's oh it's absolutely amazing amazing and ever so good for you and you know getting your intestines working properly your digestive system and all kind it's it's just great so to this article, ginger naturally contains a compound that is up to 10,000 times more effective than chemotherapy drugs at killing the cancer stem cells that make malignant tumors so dangerous. This is according to a study published in the Journal of PLOS. What is the Journal of PLOS? I hope they tell me later. Now, the chemical known as 6-shogal is produced when ginger roots are dried or cooked and the researchers found that it is active against cancer stem cells at concentrations that are harmless to healthy cells. This is dramatically different from the conventional chemotherapy, which has serious side effects, largely because it kills healthy as well as cancerous cells, largely because chemotherapy kills your immune system. Um... Oh, the government never spends money researching common sense quantum cucumber because if they actually researched common sense, there would be a lot more of it. <laughs> and there's absolutely zero government dollars spent on validating what I know, too. Mainly because, you know, they took one peek inside my brain and went, son of a... Those cobwebs actually reach out to grab you. That's kind of scary. So they, they you know, they leave me alone. <laughs> I got my own little field going on, field generator going on inside my head. And it's kind of scary for some people. In any case. <laughs> so, back to this. Uh, cells responsible for 90% of cancer death? Well, that's, yeah. That's those stem cells. And like other stem cells, cancer stem cells possess the ability to differentiate in various different cell types. So in the case of cancer, stem cells differentiate into the various malignant cells that make up tumor colonies. Now, although they make up less than 1% of the cells in any given tumor, stem cells are impervious to nearly all known or experimental chemotherapy agents. By the way, research chemotherapy, you will find out that that came from the, um, oh man, brain fart, mustard gas, World War I. Yeah, they had so much left over after the war, they had to figure out something to do with it. Hey, let's give it to cancer patients. They're already dying. Let's make a profit off of too, shall we? Oh, and make their life miserable? Yeah, sounds like a leeches at bee mentality, doesn't it? That's why I call them the leeches at bee. I know a lot of people call them the powers at bee. I refuse to give them any power. The only power they get is the power that they suck off of us because they're leeches. They are parasites. So that's why I call them the leeches that be. That was my mother. <laughs> I'll have to call her back. In any case, because, yeah, I don't I don't think you guys want to hear my mom's pterodactyl shriek going, Oh, my God, I forgot you're on the radio. <laughs> She's so funny. Where do you think I get it from? In any case, back to this article. Now, <clears throat> these stem cells are also able to replicate indefinitely, and they are capable of splitting off from their originating colony to start new tumors elsewhere. So, you know, keeping things from metastasizing all over the body. Yeah, that would be a good thing. Now, they are key players. Uh, see, okay, I should have just waited till the next paragraph. They're key players in the process of metastas metastasis. 
say it right, Grams, which is responsible for 90% of cancer-related deaths. Now, the persistence of cancer cells uh, or cancer stem cells also explains why cancer can recur even after seemingly successful tumor eradication via chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. Or all three, because, hey, it's a trifecta. <laughs> and you're going to be really adversely affected by the trifecta, just saying. Now, cancer cells or stem cells pose serious obstacle to cancer therapy as they can be responsible for poor prognosis and tumor relapse. That's what the researchers wrote. Also, what they don't tell you, you know, until after it's come back, because, you know, chemotherapy, this is one of those, they tell you that they have... Um, this whatever, whatever success rate. But what they don't tell you is that within five years, almost every person that's gone through conventional chemotherapy and radiation and surgery treatment r has a recurrence. Because when you open up the body to get to that tumor, you expose it to oxygen. And oxygen makes the cells go, Kilimanjaro, let's fly and be free. And they spread out everywhere. And chemotherapy don't get all of them. I know because I've had several family members that have passed away because of that nasty ass dis-ease. <clears throat> and I've been in on some of the little conversations with doctors. Mm, not fun. In any case, back to this. Um... So to add into the misery, very few chemotherapeutic compounds show promise to kill the stem cells. Now, researchers found that 6-Shogal targets breast cancer stem cells along several different pathways, including reducing the expression of surface markers, altering the cell cycle to increase the rate of cell death inhibiting tumor formation, directly inducing programmed cell death, and flat-out poisoning cancer stem cells, or cytotoxicity. Now, the researchers then compared the cytotoxicity of 6-Shogal um, against human breast cancer stem cells with that of the widely used chemotherapy drug Taxol. They found that while Taxol did show cytotoxicity in one-dimensional laboratory model of cancer, it showed almost no effect in the three-dimensional model that is now believed to be more accurate model of real-world cancer tumors. So 6-Shogal, however, was effective in both the monolayer and spheroid or um, one-dimensional and three-dimensional models. Now, the researchers then increased the taxol concentration by 10,000 times, but it still no, showed no effectiveness in spheroid uh, or in the spheroid model or the three dimensional model. Taxol, even though it was or yeah, even though it was highly active in monolayer cells, did not show activity against the spheroids even at 10,000 fold higher concentration compared to 6 Shogal. So, <clears throat> the fact that 6-Shogal naturally occurs in a widely consumed human food is promising for its safety profile, according to the researchers. And the dietary compounds are welcome options for human dis-ease due to their time-tested acceptability by human bodies. Now, another food-based chemical that has also shown promise against cancer stem cells is phenethyl... Isothica said, yeah, P-E-I-T-C. How about we just say that? <laughs> this chemical is produced from the reaction of a compound and an enzyme that occur in cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cabbage. And I just happen to really like broccoli and cabbage. Sweet! Now, this reaction actually takes place simply when the vegetables are chewed, which means that eating cruciferous vegetables causes the human body to be exposed to PEITC. 
according to a May 2015 press release by researchers from South Dakota State University Department of Health and Nutritional Sciences, PEITC has been successful at killing cervical cancer stem cells, and the concentrations used in the study are actually achievable simply from a diet rich in cruciferous vegetables. Now, the vegetables highest in PEITC potential are watercress, which I also like, and landcress. Sweet! This research suggests that PEITC and possibly even a diet rich in cruciferous vegetables could assist in the prevention of or recovery from cancer. Now, this article is sourced from greenmedinfo.com, ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, sciencedaily.com, and natural news. So, how awesome sauce is that? And I just happen to like ginger. And I do last my crop last year, what I dried out and then ground up. Sometimes I add that to my coffee. It adds a wonderful flavor to the coffee. So maybe that's why I'm so perky. (laughs) Get it? Coffee, perky. Okay, move along. Move along. Goofy Grammy. I think it's time for me to go check out, um, oh, and Brussels sprouts. I do not like Brussels sprouts. I do not like them. I do not like them, Sam I am. Not at all. Something about the aroma of them cooked and the texture. It's like, ack. But I do like cauliflower. I do like um, broccoli. I like cabbage. I'm actually planning on growing some purple cabbage this year and some broccoli and some cauliflower. So along with my carrots and my own potatoes that I have, my own seed potatoes that I saved back from last year's harvest and cucumbers from seeds from last year's harvest and zucchini from seeds from last year's harvest and yeah (laughs) are you starting to get the picture here (laughs) okay moving along I'm going to go see what happened this date in history over here on pigazette.com how's that sound because I'm getting close to the end of my time I'm running short okay I'm short anyway but yeah That's right, Grammy. I'm goofy. Word of the day, Joe Biden. It's a notorious busy-handed molester who makes your Uncle Grabby seem like a saint. Yeah, everybody's got that creepy Uncle Joe. Yeah. This is the guy that is, you know, when you look up creepy Uncle Joe in the dictionary, you get Joe Biden's picture. (laughs) With a big X across it. So it's like... Ugh! Stamp out creepy Uncle Joe in our lifetime. So, in the quotable quote section, fact: When a conservative slash non leftist is accused of sexual harassment, it's automatically and always true. The burden of proof is on the accused. However, the accused is guilty regardless. Fact: When a leftist slash demon crap slash socialist is accused of sexual harassment, it's automatically and always untrue, and the burden of proof is on the accuser. However, facts don't matter. Even if proof is established, the accused will never be guilty. Example, creepy Uncle Joe. That was from Dr. Hurd. Thank you, Dr. Hurd, for expressing what everybody else is thinking. Okay, most everybody else. This date in history, the 5th of April, 1964. Brits deploy driverless trains on London Underground. What could possibly go wrong? (laughs) Let's think about that a minute. This is the Brits, you know. And also, this date in history, the 5th of April, 1983. French defy the odds and grow a spine. Kick out 47 Rushki diplomats. Well, you know, because they were probably trying to tamper with their elections or something like that. Or maybe selections. That's probably more appropriate. A selection. This date in history, the 5th of April, 1987, Fox Television Network begins its bid to become America's fourth TV network. First offering is a thrilling, incorrect show called Married with Children. <laughs> Oh, back in the day when TV could be entertaining, 
even though it was still programming you, it could still be entertaining. Nowadays, it's like, really? You guys actually binge watch that shit? God, I couldn't last the first three minutes. I, I know people that, you know, binge watch that uh, third rock from the sun or what's that? What's that one with the the uh, uh, nerds? Oh, shit. I, my uncle loves it. And I mean, he's very nerdy. Very, very, very smart man. But ugh, I tried to watch it a couple of times. I really honestly did. Uh, Frank Zappa's daughter's in it. I can't think of the name of it because I don't watch it. I don't watch it. Um, but yeah, hmm. stuff that's on TV these days is like, eh, eh. Okay, Beetle, you know what? I, I almost, I would almost agree with you. I don't know that I would go that far to keep from eating a Brussels sprout, but man, I would do everything right up to. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and yeah, asparagus does do that quantum cucumber and it's in the name. <laughs> just just say it drawn out. Asparagus. <laughs> okay. Uh Oh, well smoked herring would be good, but yeah, you can you can keep the Brussels, okay? Uh yeah. So, oh, I suppose I probably oughta, I probably oughta see what's on the schedule. What's coming up? Because, yeah, I'm short time in here. So, what's coming up later on this evening? We got the Freakers Ball going on later on this evening here on reallibertymedia.com. And uh, that's going to be with Grimner and Moose Girl. Also, the Ocelli Effect, for those of you that listen to the Ocelli Effect, he comes on right after me on Channel 14 over here on Real Liberty Media, and he's on Monday through Saturday. Why? Because he's a freaking overachiever, but hey, check it out. You might be entertained, educated, and surprised, all in one big kaboom. Um, let's see, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, the Dork Table with Flash Dork, and I don't know if he's going to be able to find himself a dork hostage or not. I hope he does. Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner's going to be hopping on the radio and playing some blues for you while a rousing game of trivia goes on in the chat. And directly following Grim will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. By the way, the time for that is 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Then Monday... At 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Grim's going to be hopping on the radio again and giving you some leftovers. And they are always so savory, so succulent. So they've had time to let the flavors mingle, if you will. And the brain food is just absolutely amazing. It's amazing. It's like sham wow. It's amazing. <laughs> Yay, Grim. Also, on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, in a perfect world with Flash and sometimes Vinny. Sometimes Vinny. I'll be back on Wednesday for the uh, blah, 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 wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. Same batty time, same batty channel. Basically, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Channel 10. I think I'm on Channel 10. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> okay, and then Thursdays. Thursdays at 2 p.m. is going to be Flash Somebody with 20% off. You already, already know. You know that he marks it up. So, you know, buyer beware. And then Friday, next week Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Ponder Gander with Vinny. We don't know if he'll be live or if he'll be Memorex, but there'll be a Vinny. Ponder Gander at 1 p.m. next Friday. Ah, oh, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Hey, see, if I say the whole spiel, then I remember. Um, also on the Spreaker channel and later to be on YouTube and BitChute and iHeartRadio and I don't know where else. <laughs> I'm brain farting here. So... 
better brain fart than, well, we'll just move along, shall we? That's what I think. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. I have just a few minutes left. I know. I will tell you about the dandelion sap. How does that sound? Sounds like a heck of a deal to me. Seeing as how I already. So, how to make dandelion salve. First, you need to forage for dandelions. It's not difficult and, you know, as they are one of the most widespread and easy to identify, quote unquote, weeds that there is. And there are so many wonderful things to do with dandelions as every part of the herb is both edible and medicinal. My sister-in-law actually makes dandelion tea with it. And uh, she hasn't been sick in forever. She drinks dandelion tea almost every day. Now this dandelion salve is made using locally forged dandelions and is the perfect spring project. So, uh, the first step in making dandelion salve is to make dandelion infused oil. And after you collect your dandelion flowers, it's good to dry them, excuse me, for a day or two to remove the excess moisture. Which, you know, if you have like uh, old window screens or something like that, this one they, they made drying boxes out of window screening, basically, and wood. Um, da -da -da -da. And he says that their neighbor's yard is completely covered with dandelions, so we asked if we could pick some, and if you do this, just make sure to ask first and confirm that they haven't been sprayed with anything toxic. Now, after they've been dried a bit, put them in a jar and cover them with oil. The size of the jar depends on how much oil you want to make. So a pint jar yields about a cup of oil after straining, which is the amount that you will need for this recipe. Um, let's see. And the kind of oil that you use is up to you, but this person likes to use equal parts of extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and sweet almond oil. I think I would probably also use jojoba oil. Just just because give it a well-rounded kind of flavor, if you will. Now let your dandelion sit in a dark place for a week or so, but not too much longer because it can spoil pretty quickly. Strain out the flowers using a cheesecloth so that you can really squeeze out all the dandelion goodness and you'll end up with a lovely golden oil. So it goes on to tell you about how to make your salve and everything, but I thought I would kind of sort of get you started on it because see how simple that is? It's really not all that labor intensive. All you need after that is shea butter and beeswax. Do some essential oils if you want. Add to it. In any case, I am running out of time, or I am actually out of time. So thank you all for listening in on this Freaker Friday evening. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your evening, and I hope your weekend is just totally splendiferous. I will see you sometime in the funny papers, but until I'm back on the radio, please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.